This is what I call the human internet. The human internet is something that would, again, like the Swarm OS, create an open scalable platform that seamlessly integrates a whole variety of devices that I carry on me, around me, or in me that could work together with my body to augment the body itself, change the way we operate, or interact with the physical world around us. What we're trying to do is basically create a network of devices that is distributed, form-fitting, extended to extended operational period. You don't want to have to reboot all the devices on a regular base. Um, it goes from energy-rich devices to energy-poor devices using different interconnect strategies. But you can think about, for instance, having interfaces into our biological brain, our biological computer, the brain, connecting this to a hub device on your wrist, basically controlling things like, for instance, exoskeleton devices. If you have those devices gathered around you, they're going to be small, very tiny. Where do they get apart? Uh, so energy sparsity is something we have to overcome. Now, the vision we have is that the network we're building, this mesh network of devices, basically is going to be kind of a symbiosis or acting in symbiosis with the system we already have. You have the nervous system, you have your capillary system, one of them is information, the other one is energy. So if we can augment that by basically having an organically formed mesh network of devices that uses any means to communicate, that could be electromagnetic, inductive, resistive, capacitive, you name it. This system has to be adaptive. It has to learn about condition because the world around us and the condition we're in is continuously change. And if you want to run these things efficiently, you have to have evolution that basically combines both central processing and distributed computing. A mixture of local and global communication and processing is really essential. How can I ensure fail-safe operation or partial functionality under all possible circumstances? And finally, security and privacy. We have this concept that I call the human firewall. Uh, it's really essential that the intranet is protected from external extrusions, jamming, overhearing, but also making sure you want to make sure that the data you have locally in your network doesn't leak out. Rule number one, never send a bit unencrypted. Generating keys on a body is easy because we have a bunch of biomarkers we can use effectively to create unique keys. I think wearables extend far beyond what we have envisioned today, the offerings out there. However, if you want to make it happen really, you need that open and scalable platform. It really is stretching technology to the limit. That's why flexible electronics, nanoelectronics, and all those type of things are going to play immensely in this overall space. The fact that we really, this might be a game-changing type of technology, set of technologies, societal discussion about this is essential. And I always get my inspiration from science fiction, so I would definitely recommend if you want to learn a little bit more about some of those type of systems, read Peter Hamilton's book, uh, Pandora Star. Thank you.